Welcome to Movie Recaps Corner. This is Gulliver, who works in the mailroom of a New York literary powerhouse. And this is Dan, the new employee. When doing the routine delivery, Dan observes that Gulliver has a crush on Darcy. Although Gulliver has been on the job for 10 years, he feels that he is a nobody since he works in the mailroom. Less than a day after the new employee's arrival, he is promoted and made Gulliver's boss. This angers Gulliver, who has been on the job for over 10 years. He decides to start taking risks and goes to ask Darcy for a date. When he meets her, he lacks the courage to ask her out, and instead says that he is interested in a writing duty after seeing an advertisement on her desk. He is told to bring some samples, but since he has never written an article in his life, he copy-pastes stories from famous magazines. Darcy is amazed by Gulliver's articles and is amazed at his writing skills. She gives him the task of traveling to the Bermuda Triangle on a boat to explore and write a story about its strange happenings. Gulliver acquires a boat and sets sail headed for Bermuda. On the way, he is hit by a huge storm. His boat gets swept up in a giant inverted whirlpool. After a moment in the whirlpool, Gulliver is knocked unconscious. Gulliver wakes up on the island of Lilliput, where he is bound to the ground and surrounded by angry little men a tenth of his size. He manages to break free, but the soldiers are ordered to use their hooks and bring him down. He falls down and loses consciousness. When he wakes up, he finds that he is being paraded through the streets of Lilliput to be presented to the royal family. Gulliver is nicknamed the Beast. He is chained up in the island dungeon by the sea. The only other prisoner is Horatio, who is jailed for the unlawful courting of Princess Mary. Gulliver, dubbed the Beast by Lilliputlians, is chained up on the island dungeon by the sea. There, he meets and falls in love with Horatio, Jason Siegel, a prisoner who was previously the tallest man on the island by a few millimeters for the unlawful courting of Princess Mary. As the only two prisoners, they become instant friends. Gulliver is tasked with providing the manpower to plow the fields. When plowing, the Blafushan decides to attack the kingdom. Since the Lilliputlian's defense is active, the soldiers decide to infiltrate stealthily through diving. They then start a fire so that they can kidnap the princess while the rest of the people are concentrating on putting out the fire. After hearing the alarm bells, General Edward leaves to go and save the princess. Horatio, who knows General Edward will not reach the princess on time, begs Gulliver to help. He breaks Gulliver's chains and sets him free. Village reaches the princess just in time. He drops the enemy spies into the pond and takes the princess away. At the same time, the warning bells ring that the king is trapped in the fire. When they beg Gulliver to help him, he drops his pants and pees on the palace, thus effectively putting out the fire. A huge feast is prepared to celebrate Gulliver for saving the kingdom. They also start building him his dream house by the sea, which is totally magnificent. He starts to tell them his stories, most of which are total lies. For instance, they ask him whether he is the president of the kingdom he comes from, and he says yes. In his new mansion, he builds a theater to tell his stories to the people in the form of dramatic acts. For instance, he gives them the Titanic story as if it were a true story of his life, with him being Jack. Edward is very angry at Gulliver because he is getting all the attention. To make it worse, the king asks Edward to take a break and promotes Gulliver to the new general. Edward decides to sabotage the island defense, hoping the enemies will defeat Gulliver and will get himself reinstated back as the general. When the enemies see the defenses are down, they launch their attack. Gulliver is summoned and told to defeat the enemy since he is now the general. He wades out into the sea and requests the enemy for a truce. However, the Blefushans surround and attack him with cannon fire. He absorbs the cannon fire and then like an elastic band, fires the projectiles back at the ships. He then picks up the guide ropes and hauls the attack ships away. This strengthens his bond with the little people of Lilliput, to the dismay of Edward, the former general, who had hoped Gulliver will be defeated. Edward skulks off to the enemy with plans taken from Gulliver's salvaged boat on how to build a robot. He builds a robot and goes back to Lilliput where he challenges Gulliver to a duel. Gulliver attempts to fight the robot, but it is too powerful for him. The robot gives Gulliver a giant wedgie as he tries to run away. Gulliver is forced to reveal his secret, that he is not a president, and all the stories he was giving about himself were all lies. 
everyone is disappointed in him. He is tied to a huge raft and he is banished to an island called Island They Don't Talk About. Blefushans take control of Lilliput and lock the king and queen in the dungeon. At the same time, Darcy realizes that Gulliver's sample writings were all plagiarized. After calling Gulliver to no avail, she decides to personally undertake the Bermuda Triangle exploration and write the story. However, she is caught up in the same storm and shipwrecked on the island of Lilliput. When Horatio sees her, he escapes to go and inform Gulliver about Darcy's arrival. On the other hand, Gulliver wakes up on the new island. Unlike the previous island, the dwellers on this island are very big and Gulliver is tiny being compared to them. He is put in a doll's house by a young girl and forced to accept the new life. Horatio arrives and informs him that Darcy has come to their island. Gulliver takes a parachute from a dead pilot. They use it to jump from the house and float away back to Lilliput. Gulliver finds Darcy chained up in the dungeons. He comes clean about his background and his feelings for Darcy. Full of courage now, he breaks everyone free and goes to challenge General Edward in a winner-takes-all rematch. Edward has developed electric shocks in his suit and uses them to gain an upper hand. Gulliver is not a match and he starts losing the fights. Fortunately, Horatio bravely grabs a force and finds his way inside the robot. He turns off the electric power just in time to save Gulliver from being totally defeated. With no electric shocks, the fight is now fair. Gulliver attacks the robot and beats it on the head. He then gives it a robot wedgie and sends it back to sleep mode. As he prepares to leave with Darcy, the Lilliput King and the Blafushan leader square up to fight again. Gulliver tells the war is good for nothing and composes a song around that theme. They all join in the song and everyone is at peace again. Gulliver and Darcy go back to New York. Gulliver becomes a travel writer and enjoys more time with Darcy. His published articles can be seen framed all over the wall. And there ends our today's recap. Please consider subscribing to our channel as that really means a lot to us.